problem with all that stuff, although well intended, and there are things that the, the number of senators I think would propose that I would probably be for, uh, is that when it comes to the floor of the Senate, if it's a different, materially different from the House bill, and a lot of the things that are being proposed by different senators in the Finance Committee uh, markup this afternoon are different from the House bill. You, and then we would open it up to amendment on the Senate floor. The thing probably only gets bigger and takes a lot longer to get through because anything that we do in the Senate that is different from what the House passed or creates a conference with the House. And my guess is that the delicate balance that was struck in the House bill could be undermined uh, on both sides. I think if the income black caps are lifted uh, on those who are eligible for the rebate checks, then you probably lose Democrat support in the House. Uh, the Republicans in the House are going to resist uh, efforts to uh, increase or extend unemployment benefits at a time when we've got, for all intents and purposes, pretty much full employment. Um, and so I think there are a couple of uh, problems, uh, several problems, frankly, with uh, with the Senate doing much to this that, again, changes it significantly from what passed the House in terms of being able to respond in a timely way. In, in all likelihood, whatever the Senate does, if, it's, uh, if it does create a conference with the House and the House then decides they don't like uh, what we did to, to uh, mess with the compromise that they struck over there, it probably only adds the time it takes to get this through, and I think the whole purpose of this was to move quickly in a timely way to get the assistance out there as quickly as possible and get it uh, hoping to, to impact the economy. So in as much as there are things uh, Senator Grashley and others may want to do by way of amendment, uh, my guess is it's going to be awfully difficult uh, for us to, to do this and to complete this in any kind of a timely way if we start adding a lot of amendments that, uh, that differ from what the House did. Senator, this is Mary Claire from DEP. Um, I, I guess if you could just detail a little bit about the squabbling that you were talking about on the conference. Um, is, do you think the reason that conferees have not been appointed yet is because of squabbling between the two chambers? And I also have a second question. Um, I interviewed the new agriculture Secretary Schaefer this morning, and, and he was saying that you know while he supported a permanent disaster fund in the past, he now has the national stage, and, and he can't do that as part of the administration. Is that frustrating for you um, now that there's a Dakota's guy in the in the uh, seat in the USDA, but he can't support what is clearly something that people in the Dakotas want? <laughs> well, we we had high hopes for uh, Governor Schaefer when he got over there that he might um, differ in some respects from kind of standard administration policy, but um, I know he's got to he's got to walk the line and represent the administration's views. But we're going to do our best to, to um, impress upon him the importance of some of these issues. And I know that in the past he's been supportive of a permanent disaster title because he knows how disasters impact the state of South Dakota, how they impact uh, or North Dakota, how they impact South Dakota and other states in the Upper Midwest. So I hope that that doesn't become a, a, a deal breaker. Um, it is in the Senate bill. I think it needs to stay in the final bill that comes out of the conference. And I hope that uh, we can persuade the administration that it makes sense to have a permanent disaster title in there so that we don't have to have these. I mean, you look at back at the amount of money that Congress has spent on ad, ad hoc disaster payments over the past decade, I think you will find that it would make a lot of sense to have a permanent disaster fund. Uh, all this simply does is ensures that when a disaster strikes that we're able to address it in a more timely way than this last one where we had a disaster in 2005 and it actually took us till 2007 to get assistance through the Congress. So um, I'm hopeful that we can uh, continue to work with him on that. I think in terms of the overall process that I talked about, the, the uh, you know, there, there, there were, there's, there's, it's no secret that there are differences between the House and the Senate uh, bills and, and what uh, um, each you know strives to accomplish, and I think the important thing at this point is that the two sides sit down. And it starts with naming conferees. I mean, you can't have a conference until you name conferees. And to date, the, the leadership in both the House and Senate have not named conferees. So I'm hoping and calling on the Democrat leadership to announce those farm bill conferees immediately as soon as possible, and then they've got to convene the conference and start working out the differences. It seems to me what's going on right now is the House is trying to negotiate separately with the administration uh, and uh, the Senate evidently as well, and they're not talking to each other, and this process doesn't move forward until the House and Senate begin to talk with each other. Of course, it starts with the naming of conferees. Thanks. I won't hear you. you got such a nice
Nice picture taken with that, Schaefer. Where was that, Jerry? Oh, you, you guys sent it out. Oh, okay, okay, good, good. Sorry. Right, well, okay. Then I... Senator Grassley here is uh, jumping on the side of uh, adding on to the stimulus bill. How big of a problem is that going to be? You know, uh, Senator Grassley and other members of the Senate Finance Committee are marking the bill up this afternoon, and they are there are some ideas about how to improve upon it, um, improve over on, on what the House did. And there's a lot of support for some of the things that the Senate wants to do. But, again, my fear is if the Senate changes this significantly from what passed the House, that we end up creating a conference with the House, which slows this thing down substantially. And right now, I think the importance of um, what we do is, is critical, but the, the, time, the timeliness with which we do it is also very critical. If we are set on this notion that the rebate checks have the biggest impact, then we ought to get them out there as quickly as possible. And I, like I said, there are some other good ideas. Uh, Senator White and I would love to see some funding in this uh, bill for infrastructure simply because of the dramatic impact it has in the short term on the economy in terms of job creation and how it addresses the long-term need that we have to, and that's for more infrastructure out there. But all that being said, um, you know, I, I my guess is uh, whatever the Finance Committee produces and they bring it to the floor, they're going to try and bring it to the floor perhaps uh, later today. Uh, there are going to be some votes on whether or not this thing gets opened up more and amendments open to amendment on the Senate floor. And one of two things will happen. It'll become much larger, which makes it very difficult then to get it ultimately through the Congress and signed by the President. He's trying to keep this thing in the, in the parameters of about $150 billion. And secondly, uh, it gets drawn out because uh, we get into a debate on the Senate floor and amendments get offered and then we force a conference with the House. So uh, those... Uh, couple of things that can happen. Neither one of them are very good, in my opinion, and so I'm kind of hopeful that we can keep this thing as, as uh, lean as possible and uh, perhaps uh, go with what the House did and get it out there as quickly as possible. Okay. How, how should you think the checks will be in the mail to folks, and then how is it being paid for again? Well, it's uh, the most of it is is, uh, is is borrowing. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not being offset, which uh, there are many um, people who have concerns about how big this gets and, and uh, how it's being paid for. And essentially, it's uh, the concern about uh, offsetting it has been uh, overwhelmed by the need that people perceive to, to do something to address what we think is a, a downturn in the economy and, and keep from deepening that downturn and possibly leading us into a recession. But the, the answer in terms of how quickly this happens, if we can, it depends a lot on how quickly Congress acts. But if Congress acts quickly, um, then the IRS can begin to put the paperwork in, in motion or put the wheels in motion and do all the paperwork that's associated with this. And they think the checks could be out in about 60 days, I think is what they're expecting. It seems to me it could be done a lot faster than that. And um, I've even suggested why not just do this on the tax returns this year. And they, their answer is, well, we don't have the software to do this, which I find somewhat hard to believe in, in that it's true, troubling. But uh, in any case, uh, they're looking at getting checks out there late spring, and hopefully that will be in time to have an impact on the economy in a way that will avert us uh, or, or uh, possibly.